Welcome back to the show uh, once again. Now, art collection for a lot of people seems almost unattainable. It's very intimidating. It's very expensive. We are about to blow the doors off both of those ideas right now. Why not? Uh, we are joined now by uh, the president and director of the Elliot Lewis Gallery, Ted Letterer, is joining us now. Ted, how are you? How are I'm you? terrific. Welcome, guys. Thank so you. The Thank you. Welcome. Thing yeah. Is learning why your gallery is called what it is. What is the answer to that question? The Elliot Lewis Gallery. It's named after my son who's 16 years old. Elliot is his first name. Lewis is his middle name. Yeah. Uh, the galleries, we've been around 11 years, so we named the gallery when he was five after him. <laughs> and what does he think of it as a teenager? Oh, he, lo he loves it. He's, it's a little bit, he's at that stage where what dad does, he doesn't want to do, yeah. but he's starting to make the turn. And he's asking me about how do you do this? How do you do that? So he's starting to make that. Turn. Well, and your story is fascinating, but I, I, I mean, I want to address the questions that we started out with because people have this idea of art collecting, that it is unattainable, that it is intimidating, and it really isn't. And that's what we want to get out to people today a little bit, isn't it? Right. And so let me tell you a couple of stories just around that. Yeah. Um, in New York City, there's a couple by the name of Herb and Dorothy Vogel, and they amassed now, Dorothy Vogel uh, was a librarian with the Brooklyn Public Library, and Herb, her husband, was a postal worker. He never graduated from high school. They lived on, they li they lived on her salary, yeah. and on his salary they bought art. And there <laughs> they are in the picture. You oh my goodness. look at them and think, art collectors. Art collectors, not ordinary art collectors. These people, on a postal worker's salary, collected one of the one of the greatest art collections of mid 20th century American art. It was <laughs> massive. They donated, they had something like 4,780 pieces of art by the most wow. brilliant artists. They donated 2,000 pieces to the National Gallery in Washington, D.C. When the gallery came to their rent controlled apartment <laughs> in Manhattan, this tiny little flat, they came away with truckload after truckload after truckload of art. It was absolutely phenomenal. Now, what were their rules for collecting? Because everybody thinks it's out of, you know, you, yeah, you have to know all this stuff. But they had simple rules. They had two rules. It, they had, it had to fit in their apartment. And they <laughs> had to be a controlled New York apartment, which I can imagine was quite small. And they had to be able to afford it. But they made friends with artists. They went to all the openings. And they collected art that people, it was minimalist art. And some of it was conceptual start, and then later a little bit post minimal start. But a lot of it is not the kind of work that maybe the average person would like. Yeah. So they were able to get to artists when they could buy things in the hundreds of dollars that later became worth many, many tens of thousands well, of dollars and more. And I wow. think within that is, is that central idea of, of becoming an art collector in that you don't have to like what other people like. You really, there is art for everyone. You will find something that appeals to you if you look hard enough. Absolutely. And you, I have never met an art collector, whether it's the guy that works at the lookout as a cook, literally, yeah. mm -hmm. to the wealthiest person that I've dealt with that buys work that they don't love. Yeah. You buy what you love. And that's the first and the most important rule. Buy what you And love. if you go to art shows, if you mm -hmm. go to galleries, if you go to art schools, you will find these people, you will find these artists at and a stage of their love. career that it's available for price point and it's available mm -hmm. stylistically for what you want Right. As well. So, you know, I always, I always tell people, uh, if you're buying contemporary art, buy it the way you would buy your furniture or your clothing or anything that you love. Buy it because you love it. Never mind is it going to increase in value. Yeah. And every once in a while, you might stumble upon something that will increase in value. A little bit of a gem. Right. Now, we have a piece right here. Uh, tell us about this work and who it's by. All right, so um, the reason I brought this in, it's by Laura Muntz, who's a historic Canadian artist. Mm -hmm. uh, she was important. I think she was the first woman Canadian artist that really became well-known outside of Canada. Mm -hmm. um, Laura Muntz is known for doing children. Uh, young women, mothers and daughters. That's what she's known for. And this piece... So this is very different. This is very different than what she's known for. But it came to my attention. It wasn't very expensive. It was... I, I don't remember. It was maybe $1,000. Yeah. It wasn't a lot of money. And is that because it's outside of her usual stylistic? Absolutely. And because, I mean, Laura Muntz, uh, I think in 2006, 
there was a piece of hers that went for close to ninety thousand dollars at auction. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And we're not so, seeing children; we're seeing a sailboat. We're seeing a sailboat. Yeah. So, but the beauty of this, and this is just one of these little things, it doesn't make it valuable. But it was in this ratty old frame. I took it to the framers. We took it out of the frame. We turned it around, and on the back was wow. oh, you're kidding me. Was the beginning. So it's of, a sketch. It was the beginning of a sketch. Now, obviously, she she didn't develop it. She didn't finish it. She chose to leave it as it was. It doesn't make the piece enormously valuable, but it's just one of those what little... What an interesting story, though. No kidding. And and it ha these kinds of things happen all the time. Yeah. How do you find that people uh, collect? Because I, I know we've talked to, to people that are collectors before, and, and sometimes it's by art. I mean, there's something really pleasurable about finding an artist at a younger stage of his career mm -hmm. and doing that vertical mm -hmm. collection. Like as they go through the changes in their career, the inevitable changes, right. you collect with them as they go or or styles or whatever it is. How do most people do it? Well, is there it, a way? It, yeah, there's as many ways as there are people. I know people that only collect women artists from the 1960s to the 1980s. Right. I know people that want uh, Canadian art and they want one or two of, ev of everybody. I know other people that buy only certain artists and then they buy deep yeah. into that artist. Is it good to have a theme for what you're collecting or is it just going back to going with, you, with I, what you love? I, well, what you love clearly, I think once you become serious at, at, you know, serious enough at some point, you start to hone in on where you want to focus the collection. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and and it, could be, it could be anything, literally anything. Well, and Ted, my wife and I, uh, I mean, years before we bought our first piece of art together when we were younger, spent so much time just walking through galleries and having a coffee in our hand and just going through and looking. And, and the funny thing that I found, because we were in that very famous stretch in Granville, is, right. is how approachable everybody there was. They didn't care whether you were buying or not. They wanted to talk about the artist. Mm -hmm. They wanted to introduce you to their work. And it's just fun to be around it and talk about it. Yeah, now, uh, Vancouver's pretty good like that. Most of the galleries, I won't say that every single gallery is approachable because there are yeah. people that aren't, but most of the galleries are very approachable. Uh, you walk into New York and some of the galleries and they won't look at you unless they... Or they won't yeah. buzz they, you in. They, or they won't <laughs> well, and the Elliot right. Lewis Gallery is, is in the new burgeoning, you know, yeah. growing part of town for the art scene especially. I mean, for pretty much everything, but for art as well. Yeah, on First Avenue just east of Maine. Yeah. But, but you know, Michael and Fiona, art is like a muscle. Right? So the more you exercise your visual acuity, the stronger that muscle becomes. And so you don't need to know a lot to start. You just need to be willing to look and yeah. to learn. Yeah. And, and gallery owners, and for the most it. part, and enjoy it. Yeah. And just love it for what it is. Well, thank you so much. A little Art Collecting 101 for you with Ted Letter. Of course, as we mentioned, you can visit the Elliott Lewis Gallery. The website is on the screen for you right now. If you want to pay them a visit and look at some of their beautiful works. Be the Vogels. Go out there and start collecting art, just stuff that you so love cool. and, and, and find so a thing. And yeah, they're the cutest little couple. It's unbelievable. Thanks again, Ted. Thanks, We're going to take a quick break.